Over the past year, I've been able to, just to say over double my income, quit my nine to five and earn into the six figures. Something that this time last year, I just didn't think was gonna be possible, but was it worth it? So this video isn't a get rich quick scheme. It's not a tip off on the next crypto main coin. But if you wanna know how a regular guy, he's me, was able to over double his income into the six figures, then watch this video as I am going to go over the exact things that I did that allowed me to over double my income and if you follow these, you will also be able to start earning more money. And one of the biggest reasons that I started on this path is because an ex-boss refused to give me a pay rise that would have brought my pay up to the industry average. How much do you think I was asking for on this pay rise? Let me know what your guesses are down in the comments below. Then at the end of this video, I will reveal the exact pound amount pay rise that I was refused, which ultimately led to me earning six figures on my own. Starting off this time a year ago, my goal was not to earn double the amount that I had done previously. My ultimate goal was to have more flexibility and more freedom and not to have to answer to a boss who didn't reward, didn't appreciate and didn't value my time. So for me, that is bodybuilding, wrestling, putting more time into blogging and creating YouTube content, spending more time with my girlfriend, and since November, spending time with my cats. I'm not sitting on dad's chair, you little baby. And to actually have a little bit of downtime, spending on things like gaming and collecting, which is such a big part of my life and was such a big part of my lifestyle when I was younger, and to continue lecturing. I've lectured part-time since 2016, and the last role that I had was trying to minimize, was trying to take that flexibility away from me. So all of those things that I just mentioned are very important and kind of things that I want to do in my life. With such a lot going on in my lifestyle, I kind of figured that no job was ultimately going to give me the exact flexibility and freedom that I needed to properly pursue and enjoy all these passion projects. So what I figured is if I could make more money by increasing the value of my time, I would actually have more time to spend on the things that I wanna do that aren't necessarily money makers. What was one of the smaller, more smart goals that I could implement into this? I wanted to get my mortgage paid off before it was due to renew in May of 2023. You can watch this video here to see exactly how I overpaid my mortgage at the age of 32. Because being mortgage free would dramatically bring down my outgoings, which would take off a lot of the pressure or stress of having to earn as much money every single month, meaning I either don't have to work as much or mean I could set up my own business and take some of the stress away of having to earn as much money so I don't feel like I'm confined to working for some greedy prick in a job that I don't really care about just to keep a roof above my head. Another goal that I had was to be able to actually have more free time. How could I generate a passive income? Through investing. And to invest, you need capital and you need money in the first place. So paying off the mortgage early and having money to invest were two solid goals that made me think, okay, if I can go and earn more money, I can then get this money to work for me, which would then improve the quality of life that I've got going forward. So what are your goals? Having more zeros, on the end of your bank account doesn't necessarily improve your lifestyle. What would having more money allow you to do? How would it improve your quality of life? Write down what an ideal day, an ideal month, an ideal week, maybe even an ideal year looks like for you. Try and get the thought in your head down on paper, write it down so you can see what your ideal lifestyle looks like. Once you have an idea of the things that make you happy, you can then start to map how much money you need to be able to sustain and live that lifestyle. So once you've figured out what is driving you to make more money, what does your ideal lifestyle look like? Next, you can move on to start planning how you are going to make that money. Now for me, 
the way that I was able to over double my income in just one year was through two ways. The first was increasing the amount of time that I was spending part-time lecturing across universities. And number two was setting up my own business, which also allowed me to then quit my previous job, earn way more money, and have much more of a flexible work-life balance and a much more flexible schedule when it came to work. Here is exactly how I was able to achieve both of those things. And hopefully you can extract some of this and apply it to your own situation. First up, I planned my exit strategy from my nine till five, which actually was working out and turning out to be way more than a nine till five. Whilst I was still employed, I had a part-time job as a university lecturer. What I did was balanced enough part-time lecturing work with the full-time role that I was doing where I wasn't kind of taking on too much and my main nine to five jo job wasn't suffering. When I knew that I was on my way out and I was starting to plan my exit strategy, what I did was instead of refusing the university work, every single piece of university work that was being offered to me, I was saying yes to. And I was lining up work for a couple of months in advance, knowing that I would be able to fulfill that because I wouldn't be in this nine to five job anymore. As well as simply saying yes to more work, I reached out to the contacts I had at different universities to actually be able to secure more work over the coming months so that I knew that this wage was going to be replaced with part-time work. It provided me a safety net. It provided me more of an income than what working full-time would have been and allowed me to have the free time to start planning for my own, own business. When I realized how much work was being offered from the universities, especially if you've got contracts or you're foot in the door at more than one, the idea of working a full-time job to me just became completely redundant. Secondly, what I had to do was overcome the fear of stepping out of that comfort zone. Now, this will sound familiar to almost everybody watching. You get a job, you start earning money, that money is enough to pay your lifestyle and have enough left over as disposable income or money for savings, money to go on holiday. And you just get used to it, you get comfortable. What I found was this nine to five comfort wasn't actually keep me comfortable. It was keep me locked up. It was making me a prisoner to this job. And it was preventing me from doing what I actually wanted to do, which for me, was way back when I was a university student, I wanted to become a lecturer in marketing and I wanted to have my own business. Work at this nine to five completely prevented that from happening cause the worry or the fear of losing this comfort seemed really bad compared to well, what happens if this business doesn't work out? What happens if I set up my own and it fails? I had to get over that fear and that happened for me because the fear of trying to go out on my own and failing paled in comparison to the feeling of having a boss that was running me into the ground, not valuing my time, not compensating me financially for what I wanted, saying that the company couldn't afford it, only for him to then go out and buy a really expensive 120K plus Porsche. That just didn't sit right with me. The thought of failing my own venture just became insignificant compared to that feeling of having the piss took out of me. The third step was actually setting up my business. Now, this is the bit on YouTube videos where someone says, oh, just go and set up a business and that's it's done as if like setting a business up is easy. I'm going to go over the specifics of what I actually do and what my business is. So my business is a digital marketing agency. Specifically, I specialize in content marketing and SEO. And the way that I set my business up was I leaned on contacts I had built up in industry over the past 11 or 12 years. I was able to get my first client while still being employed by reaching out to a previous boss that I worked with who had since set up a different company. I approached them, let them know what my intentions were, let them know what I was looking to do. And this person 
referred me on to my very first client. So once I got that very first client, it was like, bang, we're ready to go. Any feelings of doubt or worry were instantly gone. That would just that just set me off then, okay? What I started doing was reaching out to contacts that I had worked with previously, contacts I knew and had built up over the years of working, letting people know that I was going to be setting up on my own. And it's surprising how quickly doing a good job for people, how that sticks in their memory, because all literally all of the work that I got when I was starting up was recommendations and referrals. The actual setting the business up was easy as well. I downloaded a Tide business bank account app, which allowed me to register the company through Companies House for free. Got the bank account set up, got the business bank account sorted, ready to go. I had an invoicing system built in there. I already knew the job I was doing because I had done this for clients previously. Now I say that's simple, and I always say to people, I think I've got lucky. But when I say to people, I think I've got lucky, they always turn around to me and say, no, Adam, you haven't got lucky. You have built up this 11, this 12 years, reputation, knowledge, skill set. So what you think is lucky, it's actually years and years and years of work now paying off. And when it gets explained to me like that, I actually think, yeah, you know what? That's right. It seems like luck, but it's a lot of years. It's the results of a lot of years of work. So once I got up and running, I was then in an ideal position because upon me handing my notice in, I already had three clients ready to go. Now, when I very first set up, those three clients wasn't replacing the wage that I had from my previous job, but it was coming pretty close. Factor that in with the university money I was having, and I was already earning more on a monthly basis before I'd even quit my job, before I'd even finished the notice, I already knew come this month, I'm going to be earning more through university and through the business and actually working less. So after the first couple of months of business and after that initial outreach to people I'd worked with previously, what have I done to actually sustain making money and grow how much I've been making? Well, through the business, I continue to keep getting lucky. So what I mean by this is the jobs that I'm doing for people, for clients, they are then referring me and recommending me to other businesses that they know. So I am then getting this influx of referrals of word of mouth. Some weeks, it might be zero referrals. Some days, it might be three referrals. It's very up and down. And being in a freelancer position, it's more than enough to kind of keep things ticking over and more than enough to grow. If I was hiring somebody, I would need to do a little bit more. But the position I'm in now, recommendations, referrals, word of mouth is a very good source of new business generation for me. Along with this, I also do what I'm referring to as lukewarm outreach. Lukewarm outreach is when I am trying to ask for an introduction to somebody who I know I need to speak to them and I am trying to get an introduction from somebody that I know or I will engage with this person, I will meet them at a networking event, I will follow them or engage with them on LinkedIn before getting in touch with that person. I'm building up relationships with people to then contact down the line. And how I found these people is through LinkedIn and through local networking events. I'm not doing anything fancy. And this video isn't any life hacks. There's no secrets or anything like that. I am literally just saying the process of the simple processes that I've followed that have allowed me to get in this position. And what I hope you take away from this is just by doing the basics will get you somewhere. It's easy to read a blog, watch a video, get all these ideas and not take action on that. But just by simply taking action of me emailing people I'd worked with previously, me going to a networking event, me sending a LinkedIn request, me sending a message to somebody on LinkedIn, by just doing these basic things leads to results. Now, the process has not been easy and there's been days, weeks and months where I have worked way more than I have ever wanted to. But I had that plan, I had that goal in mind, I'm going to graph for a year, get the mortgage paid off. So when you are working towards a tangible, solid goal, it's easier to kind of graph for short bursts 
knowing that it's going to be paying off and knowing that something's going to come of it. The way that I'm sustaining things and trying to sustain things with the business and with the lecturing is creating standard operating procedures to streamline my own workflows. So every time that I get a new client in, or every time I'm carrying out a task, I've got a process that I can follow. It's basic things, but until you actually start running a business yourself and doing it daily, weekly, it's things that you kind of just take for granted. By doing these things, it has massively helped me stay efficient. So fast forward a year from when I left my old job and over this past year, working for myself, taking on more part-time lecturing, I have actually earned over double than what I did the previous year. Now, if you were coming to this video looking for a get rich quick scheme or some new drop shipping idea, a crypto coin, some way you can scam loads of money through AI, I'm sorry to say that the way that I've earned my money over the past year, it's by grafting and by hard work, but more importantly, by taking action, by finally overcoming that worry, that doubt, that fear. Stop making excuses of, oh, I could set up on my own, but by taking action is what has allowed me to increase my earnings. There's no secrets, there's no hacks, there's no shortcuts. Everything that I have done, I've kind of given an overview of in this video. It is boiled down to spending more time lecturing, setting up the business and actually taking that action reaching out to people, doing a good job and getting recommendations and referrals. By doing this, I have been able to over double the amount of money that I've made, which has been life-changing, absolutely has been life-changing. But was it worth it? The short answer is yes, but I do not want to repeat this workload for another year. 26 year old me, looking at the lifestyle of 32 year old me now has 26 year old me would be absolutely over the moon i'm wrestling all over the country i have won bodybuilding shows i have a very 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 attractive and supportive girlfriend i am a business owner i'm lecturing it's literally professionally and personally, the things that I wanted to achieve back when I was 26, I've got that now. So I do just want to kind of reflect and take that moment to say, I am super happy with where things are. The past year has not been easy. When you see these ads on YouTube that play before finance videos, there is some guy who works for a few minutes a day at five to nine, and they've got this mansion that they're living in, in these sports cars. I am not trying to portray that lifestyle because I do not have that lifestyle. I've grafted and I've spent so much time over this past year working. I am very grateful and very thankful to be in the position that I'm now in. I have achieved the goal that I set of grafting to get enough money to pay the mortgage off. So in that sense, it has been worth it. But I'm hoping this past year is almost like a launch pad or a stepping stone to being able to get closer to the ultimate lifestyle that I want of having more free time and being able to spend that time how I want. Moving forward, I want to shift the focus away from increasing my workloads to increasing the value of my time and then decreasing my workload so I can spend it on things like blogging, on creating more of these YouTube videos and studying for my PhD. Oh yeah, I'm training to be a doctor now. Doctor Mario. And if you want to know more about that, you can subscribe to the channel. That pay rise I was refused by the way, the figure I was wanting was an extra £5,000. Had I received that £5,000, I would have never have taken the red pill. I would be earning less than half of what I'm earning now, and I wouldn't have the flexibility and the freedom that I now have. By increasing my earnings over this past year, it made a massive contribution towards me paying off my mortgage early. And if you want to know how I was able to pay off my mortgage by the age of 32, you can watch this video here.